Hello darlings, I am Cassandra. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for coming. For those of you who are new to my channel, let me introduce you to the Jungle Beauty Goddesses, the fabric sculptures and cloth dolls you see sitting behind me. I created these dolls myself and as I was sewing them child, they would not stop talking to me and this inspired my Jungle Beauty Goddess book series. And so far I have book one, two, and three. The Jungle Beauty Goddess book series is a sizzling, hot, spicy, juicy story about human evolution and the current condition of humanity. It is for adults only. My Jungle Beauty Goddess book series inspired my Jungle Beauty Goddess Oracle deck, which is based off of the personalities and characteristics of my Jungle Beauty Goddess fabric sculptures. If you are interested in making a cloth doll child, I have a plethora of free tutorials on doll making on my channel. All you need to do is click the button here. If you enjoy information about chakras, gemstones, oils, um, metaphysical knowledge, ancient wisdom, magic, welcome home darling. This is the channel where we embrace the weird and the wonderful. Thank you so much for watching. Hello, darlings. Oh, I cannot wait to tell you about my past life regression hypnosis. So if you need to get a cup of tea or something, you know, go ahead and get some tea. I don't really know how long this video is going to be, but I'm just going to just talk, okay? So I decided I wanted to do a past life regression to see which lifetime I needed to visit to help me be, be do better in this lifetime so that was the whole purpose of me going to see this hypnosis this past life regression person a hip, hypnotist okay and I was I had planned on doing it like three years prior but I didn't have the nerve so for three years I have been thinking about doing going under hypnosis to visit one of my past lives but every time I tried to do it I just chickened out so I finally got the nerve up the nerves up this past December of 2019 Woo! so anyway I couldn't sleep that night now let me tell you what was really weird about it R prior to the reading and closer to it was and closer to time for me to see the hypnosis or I'm not sure if she would call herself a past life regressionist I'm not I'm not sure of the proper term but all I know is I started developing these weird taste buds like I wanted like cold cuts and crackers and these weird like chutneys which I don't eat and I just I don't know like just weird things like I was just grubbing out on foods that I really do not eat okay and um I couldn't sleep at night and I, I don't know I just thought it was weird that I was just seems like I just the, my eating habits changed that's the one thing I noticed so anyway when I go to see her you know she um the first thing she does is we do some practice exercises and then she, i you know i am she asked me to lay on this cot and she says okay i want you to imagine yourself on a cloud right and so you just at this point you've gone through a whole bunch of other stuff and then she says <coughs> excuse me she says i want you to just float on a cloud and then she talks to spirit and says for me to to land in a lifetime that is going to be meaningful and helpful to me in this lifetime so just give me knowledge to help me improve my life so when i um land exit the cloud kind of like i just landed off the cloud i looked down the first you know she asked me to look down and i noticed that i had combat boots on i had gloves on but I, I noticed, like when I was looking down, I said, oh my God, I'm in, I, it's like I was in a war. But I looked around the environment first and I saw like a lot of buildings on fire. Like it was all gray, like um, like just smoke and it was just eerie, okay? And I told her, it just looks like there's a war. And I looked down in my combat boots and I said, I'm, I'm a soldier. I saw my gun too. My gun was like near my feet. And she said, okay, I want you to go back to you know uh, the time prior to like being in the army what was your what was your life like so I um 
So I know when I went back to the time right before, like, um, you know, that, well, when she asked me to go back, there was a house, it was like a small house, it was white, it was dilapidated. It just looked, you know, like somebody who was kind of poor, but just, um, anyway, so she said, enter the house, I entered the house, and it was kind of dark, and um, my, I had a wife, and I, re and I looked at myself, and I realized I was a white male. You know, my hands and everything, I was like, oh my God, I'm a white male, right? And she asked me, she said, okay, what is your name? And I said, Peebo. I don't, I, I don't, only, at the time I couldn't even think of a Peebo. I don't even know why Peebo came out. Um, so when I walked into the home, my wife was making dinner and I had four sons and it was two on each side of the table and she was serving like what appeared to be like a roast beef, like, you know, and I remember in the, just distinct, in, I mean, very distinctly that um, she was making dinner and I wanted to tell her that she was beautiful and I wanted to tell her I wanted to thank her for dinner, but I was always worried about money. And I couldn't even really enjoy the meal because I was worried about the next house payment. I was worried about how things were gonna be paid for, right? And so I noticed that I was a very cold and distant type person because I was constantly worried about money. And that's not far from who I am today, to be honest. So in the, um, during the um, hypnosis, she said, um, you know, she took me to my, you know, to an important day. And um, the day that I went to was on my deathbed. And I'm like, you know, gray. I look like I was probably like a 63, 65. And I was about myself. And I just remember, like, my sons came to me one by one to tell me how much they hated me. Like, seriously, like how much how I was a bad father, how I was distant, how I was cold, how I never showed them any love. <laughs> and I get the impression that my wife, and matter of fact, her name was Stella. And when um, and when she was serving dinner, the hypnotist asked me. She said, "You know, can you look in her eyes? Can you look in her eyes?" And when I looked into her eyes, she I could tell that she was my current boyfriend. Yeah, it's my current boyfriend. And it was just blew my mind. Like I looked directly, and I was like, I knew that was, her, you know, his soul. Her, you know. And her name was Stella and so and I felt really bad because she was this woman who I just never appreciated I was you know because I was so busy trying to provide so I think she, from what I could gather she died before me and on my deathbed like I said my my sons took an opportunity to tell me how much they hated me and how I was distant and cold and um, how I never showed love and I just drifted away and so I was really, really sad about the whole thing, um, and so I told her that the thing I regretted the most was that I just never show, you know, never told my wife that I appreciated her, that I cared about her, that I thanked her for the food. The dinner was delicious, you know. She, I couldn't have asked for a better wife, and that I, I could never appreciate the moment because I was always worried about the future. That was my lesson for this lifetime because I'm still that way to this day. No matter how much I have, and no matter what I have, I'm always thinking, oh, what about this? What about my student loans? What about this? It's almost like it's hard for me to enjoy the present moment because I'm always worried about the future. So that was one of the main main points of me going to that lifetime, and that's something I'm still working on. I'll tell you how I'm working on that. So the hypnotist gave me an opportunity. She said, we have to go back because I was really distraught over how negligent I had been as a husband and a father. So I went back, she said, let's go back and recreate the moment and tell your wife how you feel. So I went back and I told her how beautiful she was. I told her how much I appreciated her. And I was like really crying, like telling her that, you know, I was really sorry because I just wanted to provide for them. I just wanted to be a good husband. And that even being a good husband, I was being a negligent and distant husband because I was just so worried about not being a good provider. And I apologized to my sons and we all like had a group hug and it was like really being there. And after the the um, the reading or they've been under hypnosis or the past life regression, I dreamt about them for like several weeks. It took a long time for me to get past that. And I also um, went to other lifetimes where I was a nun. 
and yes I was literally a nun and I enjoyed it like I read the halls were like sparkling and my some of my, my friends now in my life was, was there with me my daughter was one of the sisters my friend Kim my friend Lisa um, we were all laughing and giggling and we, that, that's one of the lifetimes that we shared together I thought that was very interesting and we really enjoyed it but then also um, we had another um, lifetime experience where so this was really this really blew my mind and when she was talking to my oversoul or you know I don't I'm not sure like it's my higher self and um, it says that you know that I'm an alien and that um, I've I've been on a committee to create life oh I know I wanted to know what role did doll making play in my current life and my oversoul or higher self or what said to me that that is a, um, a crossover from many 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 millions of lifetimes where I have I'm like an alien and I have been on a committee to create life forms for various planets throughout the galaxies and so creating dolls is another aspect of that part of me that I'll carry with me uh, it's, it's, it's a core part of my soul matrix that I'll carry with me in many lifetimes but it's not necessarily it's not created for me to um, create wealth from but for me to um, as storytelling and to express ideas and I think this is why you know this lifetime I'm like attracted to star alien beings and I have so many other like skulls and the, you know even the beings that you see here that I love that I'm like I made um, this beautiful being and I feel like you know if if I could it, wait, let me just put this like I knew I should have probably not touched it because it feels like it's hard to get things back. Okay, I'm gonna turn you away from the So, um, so creating new life forms for various galaxies and planets is another part of my personality. Um, yeah. So this is the thing. After the reading, I decided to make a you know make a choose for God, child, and that is. I'm going to not complain for a year. So basically, I was giving myself a couple months until 2021 of March. Like March 1st, 2021, I can complain if I want to. But, oh, one of the primary things I learned about myself is that I'll work really, really hard on something. As you've probably seen on my channel, I'll just say, okay, you know what? I'm going to write a book. I'm going to make 50,000 videos, I'm going to do my thing thing, and then I'll do that, and then I don't see the results that I expected, like say I didn't make the money I thought I was going to make, or I didn't get subscribers like I thought I was going to get, or whatever it is, or maybe, and then I'll just go into a little bit of a depression. So this is, has been a, a cycle in my life, work really, really, really hard, right, and then go into a deep depression for about three to four months. And what happens is it changes my frequency and my vibration and it stops everything I want from coming to me. That was one of the things that came out of my readings is that I, I usually, after I um, create whatever it is that I want, I start my expectations of, of the outcome and how fast I want things to come. Actually what happens is the depression that I usually go through after creating so much it changes the frequency where I'm not able to receive um, what I'm asking for. So the main thing I learned from my past life regression um, session is that I really need to work and not, you know, not go into those long spells of depression because those long spells of depression is what keeps me, um, you know, in a state of struggle. And to be, and to be uh, gra grateful. Not, not that I'm not. I always say I'm a grateful person, but the thing is, to be grateful and not worry about what's going to happen three months down the line or a month down the line. That is still a personality trait that I have today. So after the um, past life regression reading, I also looked up the name Peebo, and they said it was a common Irish name. 
and the name also has like a meaning in terms of like a person who like like rich foods like meats it was so weird that all of the things that I had been craving that was that name was associated with it it was so weird um would I suggest that you do something like this you know I'm not really going to tell you to do a past life regression because I've done others on my own and I think you have to be brave and ready for that information um I think that your journey right now and being present is is a lot. So I think if you have any doubts about it, don't do it because you have to be ready for the information that comes through. And like I said, I couldn't stop thinking about it for a very, very long time. Well, I just wanted to share this story with you about my past life regression and how it's impacted my life. I've made a truce with God not to complain, to work, and to be at peace with where I am and who I am. I really hope this video helps someone. Thank you so much for watching.